Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining in today. In my last video, we looked at some of the recommended configurations for Office 365 ATP safe attachments. In this video, we're going to look at some of the recommended configurations for ATP safe links and how it can help provide maximum protection at the same time provide a best user experience. So let's dive in. All right, now let's look at ATP safe links. ATP safe links protects us from malicious URLs in some of those emails, which usually takes us to phishing URLs, phishing web pages, or a, a content which is malicious in the form of a PowerShell, JavaScript, and some of those kind of things. Now let's go ahead and configure an, a safe link policy. All right, so now we have now we are here at the safe link uh, page. Now let's see what we have to do over here. So there will be a default policy that you'll have to go and turn it on. So let's open this one. Now here, uh, the first thing first is that you have a box here uh, called block the following URLs. Now this is a additional capability which allows administrators to come over here and add your URL on your own and put it in a block list. You, there will be a lot of times you'll find malicious URLs coming to you from elsewhere, uh, especially on your personal emails, or you might read some article which basically points to certain URLs and you know that these URLs are malicious and you don't really want your users to click on it and get access to those web pages. You can yourself come over here and add those URLs manually. Um, there are additional settings that you would like to turn it on. First of all, use safe links in Office Pro Plus, Office on iOS and Android which I would suggest and I would recommend you turn it on. Now what this will really do is that if there are malicious URLs in your Office files and you're opening it on a PC uh, which has Office Pro Plus installed on it, the safe link policy will be applicable to those, uh, those documents as well since you're opening it in Office Pro Plus client. And of course the same thing happens if you're using an Office client, Microsoft Office client on iOS and Android platform as well. So it doesn't really matter where the, where, the, where, the, where the document actually has come from, as long as the document has malicious URLs, you will be protected uh, as long as you're using Microsoft Office clients, uh, Office Pro Plus on PC and Office for iOS and Android. Now here are additional things that I would suggest that you should do. Uh, there's an option called do not track user when user clicks safe link. I would recommend that you uncheck this box because you would like to track users who have clicked on those URLs and then got blocked so that you can uh, you know make them uh, aware that you know they 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 were got because you would like to know who actually have clicked on this URL so that you can maybe put them in a training or something and then uh, help them be more aware of that, that they should not click on these kind of URLs because unless they have actually validated that they are they do the right thing. Um, so please uh, go ahead and uncheck them if, if you want. Also, there's an option to uh, do not let user go through the safe link to the original URL. So you do have an option to let users override the safe attachment verdict or safe link verdict. I would not recommend you doing that because if you enable this policy or this configuration, then your users will have an option to override the safe link verdict. So if, an e if, if a URL is malicious and it is being blocked by the Office ATP service, the user will have an option at the bottom to say to click on continue anyway. And you may not really want the, your users to do that, however. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and check this box that I don't really want my users to go ahead and click through the safe link to the original URL. That's it, now let's go ahead and save this policy. While it is being saved, uh, now we have to do a, our configure a secondary policy which will be applicable to different set of users. This is a kind of a global policy and now this policy will give us more granular control how we want the safe links to basically work in my environment. So I'll go ahead and click on plus sign uh, which will help will provide me an additional layer to create a policy. I'm gonna name it uh, ATP safe link policy. And the, obviously the default option is off. You The first thing first that you will go, go ahead and turn this on. After you turn this on, you have additional configurations to make. An option here called use safe attachments to scan downloadable content. So if your URLs in those emails are pointing to a downloadable content like a Excel sheet which has macro 
or a PowerShell script or some other some other malicious code that you would like that content to first get detonated and see if the same file is doing some malicious behavior before users can download it on their own. So you should check this particular box. Uh, then save. This is one of the important settings. Uh, safe link to internal emails within the organization. When people send emails from one mailbox to another within the tenant, they don't really go outside the tenant and come back in. So any gateway-based solution would not really have means to detect what's happening within the tenant. So you should check this box, which basically protects you from internal threats. So if one of the mailbox which has got compromised and now that mailbox is being used to carry out malicious campaign within the, your organization by sending malicious URLs, you will be protected against that if you enable safe link for internal emails as well. The same thing here, do not track users when user click on safe link. I would suggest you leave it unchecked because we would like to track those users so that we know which users are clicking on these URLs and getting blocked. And the last option, do not let users click through the safe link. I would again check this box because I don't really want my users to click on those URLs and then override uh, the verdict provided by the safe link policy. Here, here's a section where you would like to put certain URLs that you don't want you know, Office ATP to wrap uh, so that you don't want any, any additional uh, you know, detonation or checks to happen for these URLs. Maybe these URLs are part of your internal organization and so on. So you can enable those whitelisting, whitelisted URLs over here. And then we would like this apply to certain section of users or for the entire domain. I'm gonna do ahead and do it for the, my entire domain. Okay, um, so here's my domain. It will automatically populate. So there, I, there we go. All right, and now save. So that's it. So now we have just configured the ATP safe link policy. So any URLs coming in those emails to you are now going to get wrapped. And at the time of click, when user click on it, or at the time of delivery, the URLs will get detonated for any malicious content on a malicious web page. And if there are any anomaly, anomalous uh, web pages out there, which URLs are pointing to, those URLs will get blocked upon click. All right, so that's how the safe link policy is gonna work. So that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. In my next video, we're gonna look at some of the recommended configurations for anti-phishing policy where we're going to look at uh, things like anti-user impersonation, anti-domain impersonation, and anti-spoofing. So till then, thank you so much uh, again. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like those videos. And uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day.